the mountains called to me. Their snow-dusted peaks and plunging ravines whispered promises of adventure, tantalizing half-truths to lure me into their jagged embrace. I heeded their siren song, joining an expedition as an eager novice, unaware of the madness that awaited. Our journey began animatedly, our spirits high. The group consisted of nine, seasoned explorers with weathered faces that told of their many brushes with death in far-flung corners of the world, veteran mountaineers who navigated precarious trails with innate ease, intrepid researchers chasing revelations and discoveries to better humanity, and myself, woefully unprepared and ignorant of the trials ahead. We trekked deeper into the Himalayas, the thin air burning my lungs with each labored breath. I relished the pain, saw it as a test of my mettle. Promises of glory, of conquest over untamed lands, spurred me on. As we climbed higher, the air grew colder, stinging exposed skin with icy needles. Jagged shards of rock and ice tore at gloves and boots, but I scarcely noticed, too enthralled by the austere grandeur surrounding me. The landscape was unlike anything I had witnessed, addictively powerful in its desolation. Peerless mountain vistas like titans clashed and collided, stretching to the infinite horizon. Ancient ice fields creaked and groaned underfoot, crystalline masses shifting restlessly. Razor-sharp ridges sliced the cobalt sky, bare rock gleaming in the unrelenting sun. I had never felt so insignificant, so profoundly humbled by the sheer magnitude of earth and stone rising above my mortal flesh. Solitude settled around us, an almost sentient thing. It seeped into my mind, whispering of forgotten eons when only the mountains existed. Safe, I thought foolishly. We were impervious in our modernity, armed with technology and knowledge. The old superstitions were merely fables, campfire stories to titillate and frighten. How wrong I was. How naive. On the seventh evening, the serene stillness metastasized into something more sinister. An uncanny hush blanketed the mountains, silence devoid of life. The wind stilled, the frigid air grew, teeth that gnawed through layers of clothing to bare skin. Even the beams supporting our tents groaned no more, metal gone brittle in the cold. Our seasoned Sherpa guide exchanged ominous glances with the others, his sun-weathered face creasing with apprehension. He spoke to us in hushed and urgent tones. We must remain in the tents tonight. The abominable snowman stalks these parts when winter approaches. His voice dropped to nearly a whisper. Stay together. Stay alert. Do not let curiosity lead you into peril. The Sherpa's words kindled my curiosity. What was truth? What fanciful imaginations brought on by isolation and altitude sickness? I had to know if this Yeti was mere legend or startling reality. That foolhardy compulsion would propel me into the waiting jaws of madness, but the seeds had already taken root in my restless mind. Doubtlessly, I had some notion that revealing the existence of the mythical creature would bring fame and admiration upon my return. A story for the ages, with myself the triumphant hero at the heart of the tale. Arrogant, foolish, naive. Under moonlight diffused through racing clouds, I crept from my tent into the oppressive darkness beyond. The trees stood like silent sentinels, branches buckling under heavy mantles of snow. I glanced back once at the camp, pinpricks of light from lonely tents already devoured by the brooding forest. With reckless abandon I continued, my sights set on the trail ahead. Mooncast shadows capered and danced around me, taunting tricks of an overtired mind. The trees themselves seemed to twist into grotesque shapes, silently warning me away. But I pushed onward, too enthralled by the prospect of personal glory. With each mirrored step, the brooding weight of the forest closed in. The icy air cleaved my lungs with every labored breath. Spectres made flesh on the exhale only to dissipate back into darkness. Sounds echoed and amplified, the snap of a nearby twig seeming like a gunshot in the muffled void. The trees crowded together as if to block my path, their numbers ever increasing as I ventured deeper into the frozen wood. Something watched, something waited. The proof I so desired now felt like a trap, its frigid jaws slowly closing around me. 
When the attack came, it was so sudden that my shriek of terror never left my lips. A blur of white against endless white, no warning given. Tree trunks splintered like matchsticks from the force of impact as we tumbled down the snow-blanketed mountainside. All was a cacophony of ripping fabric and snapping bone. We finally slid to a halt in a narrow crevasse, snow piling around us. The creature's dense fur and powerful muscle pinned me down, the heat of its body a mockery of the lifeless cold surrounding us. Ropes of saliva dripped from curved yellow fangs onto my face as its fetid breath washed over me. Eyes like glowing embers reflected my own wide-eyed fear and helplessness. Lips curled back into an animalistic snarl, revealing teeth capable of tearing through flesh and bone with ease. It raised a leathery arm tipped with claws meant to disembowel prey in an instant, and I cringed, expecting those knives of keratin to rip into my vulnerable body and let loose the hot rush of my lifeblood onto pure white snow. But instead, a clawed hand was pressed to my forehead with savage force. There was no pain, only whirling disorientation. Images flashed through my mind against my will, glimpses of blood spilled on snow, of hunger and rage, of a sentience ancient and almighty. A deluge of alien thoughts invaded the sanctity of my mind, drowning sanity in their frothing current. The creature's consciousness forced itself into my own, secreting its psyche into the crevices of my brain. My vision dimmed at the edges as I thrashed feebly, all strength sapped from my body. As the darkness crept inward, claiming more of my sight, a voice slithered into the deepest recesses of my mind. Ancient, powerful, monstrously self-assured of its supremacy. Mine. The single word rang in my thoughts as oblivion took me into its embrace. I floated, untethered through time and space, no longer belonging to the realm of men, but now a plaything of a force far beyond my comprehension. Brief moments of awareness were filled only with all-consuming dread, my broken mind unable to process more than fear of the creature that had effortlessly stripped me of reason. I was no longer human, only a vessel housing the devastation wrought by my own hubris. I awoke to unfamiliar faces blurred above me, my body shaken forcefully by unseen hands. Their words were muffled, as if underwater, their urgent tones causing only confusion. My mind was a tumult of jumbled images, memories severed and bleeding together into newly forged horrors. When I tried to stand, vertigo overwhelmed me and I collapsed back into awaiting arms. In choked sentences, I tried explaining what I had witnessed in the woods. The creature, its red eyes aglow with preternatural intelligence so unlike any earthly beast. The violation of my mind, the images of savage winters centuries past cut into the vulnerable gray matter of my brain. But the others exchanged doubtful looks tinged with unease, humoring the madman in their midst. They spoke soothing words to calm my frenzied ramblings, treating me as one would a frightened child roused from vivid nightmares. I knew then that I was alone in this twisted reality I now inhabited, severed from those anchored firmly in placid normality. My encounter had rendered me alien to their world. We abandoned camp that morning. The morning sun did nothing to burn away the bone-deep chill that had settled into my flesh. It could not pierce the ice in my veins or thaw the dread in my heart. I glanced back only once at the towering peaks receding behind us on the torches descent, my eyes instinctively seeking out the tree line for any trace of my attacker. Was it merely wishful fancy that made my pulse quicken at the thought of glowing eyes tracking my departure? The possibility of again hearing that resonant voice in my mind declaring ownership of its newly claimed possession filled me with equal parts fear and anticipation. In the years since, I find myself dreaming of endless white expanses untouched by man that glimmer under strange constellations. The mountains call to me in the voices of ancient glaciers and ageless stone promising a reunion if I would only return to their perilous heights. A part of my spirit remains in that snow-swaddled crevasse, ensnared forevermore by the creature that forced itself into my mind and left its claw marks upon my fragile psyche. Though my body walked away from that encounter and down from the mountains, the vital essence of my humanity remained behind, an offering left in the drifting snow for the elder god of those forsaken peaks. In unguarded moments, I hear its voice echoing through the years, 
shattering any fragile shell of normalcy I have built around myself. Mine. The single word etches itself behind my eyes. At night, it pulses in time with my frenzied heartbeat as I lay wide-eyed in the dark. A reminder. A warning. A prophecy. Mine. I fear the day its call becomes too sweet to resist. On that inevitable moonless night, I know I will turn my back on the world of light and reason. I will let the mountains reclaim the broken shards of my mind with their patient, crushing gravity. And I will finally gaze once more into those eyes like smoldering embers, my reflected face tiny in their fathomless depths, and understand that I have always belonged to it. My will is not my own, and I am powerless to resist the siren song. So I wait, moving through the motions of a normal human life. But my thoughts remain ever turned skyward, to the calling of ancient voices no others can hear. It knows I am coming, and I will answer its summons gladly, like a prodigal son returning to their true home. I will offer up not only my mind and body, but my soul to dwell forever in the kingdom of wind and stone and ice. There I will commune with the eldritch thoughts of a god, and understand the insignificance of man. We are but motes of dust, and to dust we will return. But I have glimpsed the Eternal, and it knows I am coming at last.